Hey guys, I really wanted to make this video for a while and I wanted to make it something as 15 or 20 of the best tips like pro tips for After Effects, but I got lazy and I came up with only 13. So 13 is gonna be our lucky number. I'm wishing all of us the best of luck. Also, uh, I'm gonna do the basic YouTuber thing here. Number eight is my favorite one and it really is. I didn't know about it. I found it while I was researching for all the tips and secrets, but the last one is also pretty great. So you can stay till the end. Yeah, also smash that like button guys and subscribe to the channel. Let's start with the video. First extremely secret tip. When we create shape layers in After Effects, the anchor points always go into the middle of the composition, while it's very easy to go and hold control and double click on this pen behind tool and the anchor point snaps to the middle, there's an easier way to do it. Let's delete this shape layer, go to Preferences, General, and just stick this center anchor point in new shape layers. And from now on, every time you create a shape layer, the anchor point will go in the middle. To create very quick keyframes on the transform tools, you can go Alt Shift P for position. So that's, that creates a keyframe, Alt Shift P, there you go. Alt Shift S creates a scale keyframe, Alt Shift R creates a rotation keyframe, Alt Shift T opacity, Alt Shift A is for anchor point. And you can later on just move the position, change the rotation and maybe change the scale as well. And here you have this beautiful animation. Second tip, third tip. You probably know about separate dimensions. So if you go to position, you can separate the dimension into X and Y. I use this quite often for cameras. When you animate them, it's very useful. But when you go to scale, you can't separate dimensions. But there is a way to do it. Add a slider control, duplicate it, name the first slider control X, the second one, name it Y. Now let's click Alt and on the stopwatch. This is our expression. Now let's create those big brackets, go inside the brackets. And first let's click on this pick whip and pick whip to the X, put comma and pick whip to the Y and go out. Now let's set both of them to 100 and you can see the circle. But right now you can animate the X and the Y, which might be very useful if you're animating this bow, for example, you can make it squish and squash very easily. This one is pretty cool. Let's put a few layer on our triangle. Let's change the color to something pretty. Click on the fill layer, click on edit, copy with property links, that, then select the other two layers and paste. Now, if I go ahead and change the color on our triangle, the other two shape layers are gonna change the color as well. I'm pretty sure this has happened to everybody. You create a keyframe, you move your object to the right, then you want the object to stay on one place for, let's say a second here, and then you want it to go back. But even though those two keyframes are on the exact same spot, our object is moving. How do we fix that? If you select the two keyframes, click with the right button on the keyframes, go to keyframe interpolation, change the spatial interpolation to linear, that fixes it. Another easier way to fix it is again to select those two keyframes, select your convert vertex tool and click here on the square and it does the same. So this probably has happened to everybody. You had a slot in your composition and you really wanted to change it to a monkey, but you don't want to copy any keyframes. So what you do is you select the slot, then click on your monkey here in the project bin, uh, hold Alt on the keyboard and drag the monkey on top of the slot. And now you have a monkey instead of a slot. Awesome. Here's another one. Okay, you have this complicated animation. This bow is moving uh, like from left, then it goes up, then goes down, then blah, 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 moves right. And then you watch this amazing, this beautiful animation and you, you're like, oh my God, I spent so much time creating this and I actually want the bow to be moving from right to left. What do you do? You go ahead and start moving the keyframes left to right, maybe exchanging them. No, probably not, not a good idea. Then you can go ahead and pre-compose it. So pre-compose, okay. And then you can click with the right button, um, time reverse layer, which is perfectly fine, but there's an easier way. Select all your keyframes, click with the right button on one of the keyframes, select keyframe assistant, time reverse layers. And now the bow is moving right to left. Perfect, that's just what we needed. 
Okay, this is a wild one. You have your video, you've exported for a client or for, I don't know, for yourself. And then you have no idea where you saved your project, but you have your video. So you take your video, put it in After Effects, select the video, go to Edit, Edit to Original, and After Effects finds your file, finds where you saved it. I mean, this is a game changer for me. I didn't know this one. This is the one that I found while searching for other ones. And this is probably something that I'm going to be using a lot. I keep on forgetting where I save my files all the time. So this is going to be perfect for me. How this works is when you're rendering. So if you, if I click on Control M, go to lossless here. And there's this checkbox here where it says include project link. The only catch is that it doesn't work in Adobe Media Encoder. It only works if you render it straight from After Effects. I'm pretty sure you know this one. It's a very like basic tip trick secret, but it's a very, very useful one. So this is the dependencies here under file. So the ones that I use the most are collect, remove unused footage and reduce project. So how do they work? So let's say we select those three compositions here. We go to file, dependencies, uh, reduce project. So After Effects is gonna remove everything but those three compositions that we just selected and everything inside of them is also not gonna be deleted. So what you select is gonna stay there. The next one, remove unused footage. Anything you haven't used in your project bin just gets removed, pretty straightforward. Collect files is awesome, especially if you're working with other people or if you're sending your projects to clients. So After Effects is collecting all the files from all the different folders you've spread around in your project. So one video from your download folder, another video from your picture folder, another blah, blah, blah from anywhere. After Effects collects it into this project here. You just, you need to pick a place where you want to save it and it saves it in a folder for you. Very useful. Everything's a calculator in After Effects. If you open your transform tools here, for example, uh, you can go to scale and let's say uh, you scale your ball to something weird. Let's say 73.56, blah, 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 blah. Okay, some random numbers. And now your client tells you you wanna make this circle twice as big. So what do you do? You open your calculator. Nah, I'm kidding. You actually go here and you can use all of this as calculators. So for example, if you wanna multiply it by two, press the star and two, and it makes it twice as big. Then let's say the rotation, we put it something random, 34. So we can write plus 21. Then maybe we can divide our scale by five. Uh, most of the time I'm using it in the composition settings, to be honest. So if I wanna make my composition full HD, right now it's in 4K, I can go and type underscore two, and it makes it twice as small, so makes it into full HD. This is very useful if you don't wanna remember any weird resolutions. Do you know that you can open more than one comb viewer in After Effects? If you click here, you can click on new comb viewer and you can lock the first one, unlock the second one, that's how I prefer it. And here on this unlocked one, I'm gonna open my Kaleido. So this is the Kaleidoscope, this is the background. So now if I change any settings here on this Kaleidoscope, so for example, if I make it smaller, I can watch it update right away in my main composition and I can see if I like the look. Another thing you can do is parent between compositions. So for example, here we have this triangle rotating and we have the circle moving left to right. So let's pre-compose this square so I can show you how you can parent between compositions. So let's pre-compose this square, okay? So now let's open another comp viewer. Let's lock the first one and let's unlock the second one. The second one, I'm gonna open my square. And now I am going to take this square comp and move it to the right. So now I can see my square here and I can see my main composition here on the left. Let's take the position and the rotation. And here we can take the pick whip and this is the position. So let's pick, it, pick whip it to the position of the circle and the rotation, let's pick whip it to the rotation of the triangle. And now if we close that and go in our main comp, and you can see that the square is rotating and moving left to right. If you wanna make your animation faster or slower, you can select all your keyframes, hold Alt, and move the keyframes left to right. So if I move it left, the animation is gonna be much faster. If I move it right, it's gonna be much slower. And the last one, if I create a shape, then create another shape, create another shape, another, another, another. All of them are creating here on the shape layer. But what if I wanna create a mask that goes into these shape layers? You can click on this button right here. And right now, without clicking on anything else, we're gonna start making 
masks. Pretty cool. Let me know in the comments below if you knew all of them or if some of them blew your mind. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. Also, there are a bunch of videos here that you can watch. So yeah, go ahead and binge watch some videos. See you in the next one, guys.